Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Mariam and I'm a PhD candidate at Arizona State University. Today, I'll explain our work on effective messaging on social media. What makes online content go viral? Today's presentation outline is as follows. First, I'll introduce the topic and then talk about the content-based hypothesis and case studies. After that, I'll explain our hypothesis testing approach and talk about the data preparation, formulation of the null hypothesis, and show the results and conclude the presentation. As we all know, social networking has become one of the main sources of communication in recent years. We can see that uh, more than 4,600 million people are using social media actively as of Jan 2022. It's a cost-effective and highly accessible channel for viral spread of information. A spread of information happens when people share a piece of information in a sequence. Some of the content shared by users will rapidly gain attention and go viral. Information cascade is one of the main effects of virality, and it has implication in many applications such as public opinion making, persuasion, effective marketing and advertising, so on and so forth. Predicting virality of a message over social media is a challenging task due to its complex nature and many factors that play a role in this matter, such as temporal, cascade structure, global graph, user item attributes, content features. Among these factors, content features gained more traction since content is an inner driver and one of the key factors that leads to virality of an item. Our research analyzes the effect of a message's content feature, including negativity bias, causal arguments, and threats to core values on its virality. In this research, we hypothesize three hypotheses that singularly or jointly will increase a message's virality on social media. So the first one is negativity bias. We believe that having a negativity bias in a message will increase its virality on social media. The next one is the causal arguments, which increase the virality of a message on social media. And the last one, Threats to core societal and individual values of a target audience will increase the virality of a message on social media. Virality was measured as the retweet counts of a message in a pair of large and smaller real-world Twitter datasets, UK Brexit and Nord Stream 2. Now let's see the datasets. UK Brexit dataset comprises of 51 million tweets from 2.8 million users. It's dated between June 1, 2015 and May 12, 2019. It's about the Brexit referendum, which took place on June 23, 2016 in United Kingdom. They asked the electorates whether the country should remain as a member of or leave the EU. Brexit has two sides, leave versus remain. To gather this information, we use the seed keywords and hashtags that are shown in this table, and we collected the data and purchased it from Twitter. In this figure, you can see the daily tweet volumes of UK Brexit, its leave and remain camps and enduring trends. Also, we can you know, notice the basically some key events here, such as referendum day, UK general election, Boris Johnson's resignation from cabinet, Dominic Raab's resignation from cabinet, and member of parliament's rejected no deal Brexit. The below figure is a Sankey diagram that shows the enduring leaves and leave and remain trends. So in the next sli slides, I'll explain how we come up and created this uh, figure. So the first step was detecting the episodes. To detect the episodes, we used a 20-day moving average signal on a daily volume chart, alongside with an enveloping off, off, upper and lower band that is moving at the you know, average plus 2 sigma and average minus 2 sigma. When a daily volume spiked over the upper band, it's an indication of beginning of a new episode. 
Each episode lasts until the beginning of the next episode after falling below the lower band. We detected 13 episodes, many of them corresponding to key political events for this data set. Next was um, understanding the social network structure and flows. So for each episode, we used a Louvain community detection algorithm and user, user retweet graphs. So we created the Sankey diagram based on that result. A column of boxes corresponds to the sizes of the detected communities during each episode. The belts represents the flows. The width of the belts is proportional to the shared flow rates between the boxes. So the Sankey diagram represents the fragmentation of the clusters or boxes, also the unification of, a cluster, of the clusters and boxes. So as we can see in the uh, figure, there are 61 communities with belts between episodes pointing at, it, pointing at enduring community trends. Later, we wanted to basically color the camps, live versus remain. So to do so, we identified top 400 most retweeted users and retweeted tweets. We asked a, a domain expert specialist to mark each user and tweet as a member of leave or remain camp. Then we use a label propagation algorithm to label unlabeled users based on the community to which the maximum number of its neighbors belong to. So the result of this coloring was uh, 36 communities reside in the remain camp overall of 1.3 million users and 25 will reside in leave camp 1.8 million 1.5 million users also this result is supportive of uk voted to leave the eu on june 23rd 2016. the next data set is the nord stream 2 which comprises of five 16,000 tweets from 250,000 users. It's dated between October 1st and October 15, 2019. It's about the controversial gas export pipeline construction project running under the Baltic Sea from Russia to Germany. This table shows the related seed keywords and hashtags that we used to collect and download this data from Twitter API. Okay, now let's talk about hypothesis testing. To test our hypothesis, we use the two sample KS test, which compares the distribution of the observations from two data sets. There would be a null hypothesis, H0, which says that two data sets values are coming from the same continuous distribution. There would be an alternative hypothesis, H1, which says that these two data sets are from different distributions. The hypothesis test can be carried out at a specific statistical significance levels. So in our case, since our data is a discrete data, we use an extended version of KS test, which was developed by Dimitrova in 2020. This enables us to calculate CDF function for the discrete data, which is one of the requirements of the KS test. Okay, now let's see the um, each of these hypotheses. The first one, negativity bias. We considered messages with negative sentiment as the ones that carry out a negativity bias. So we detected the sentiment of a message using the Vader sentiment analysis library. Also, we augmented that with an enhanced sentiment lexicon. So if the data passes these two conditions, then we will put it into the negative biased group. So there are two groups of data here negative biased versus others. Next, we will see the formulation of the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis formulation here would be the popularity distribution of tweets with negativity bias are no greater than the popularity distribution of tweets with no negativity bias. As we can see the results in this table, since the p-value is far less than significance level, so the null hypothesis is rejected for all three data sets. It means that the tweets having a negativity bias and the tweets not having a negativity bias do not follow the same distribution. 
So this diagram and figure will support our finding. So as we can see in the tweet count versus retweet count graph, on average, the messages containing a negativity bias are more effective and achieve higher virality in both leave and remain camp. The same thing happens in the Nord Stream 2 data as well. So on average, the messages having a negativity bias are more effective and achieving higher virality. The next hypothesis is the causal argument. So to detect the causal language and argument, we use the lexicography-based matching scheme, which uses to detect the presence of a positive and negative causal language. So we use pen discourse tree bank, which includes several causation relation types, primarily cause reasons. We extended the cause reason relationships through word net synonyms. Then we divided the data into two groups, one including causal language or argument versus others. And then we have the uh, null hypothesis formulation. Similar to the previous one, the null hypothesis here will be popularity distribution of tweets with causal arguments are no greater than the popularity distribution of tweets with no causal arguments. As we can see from this table, since the p-values are far less than the significance level, the null hypothesis is rejected for all three datasets, which means the popularity distribution of tweets for the ones that including causal language or argument do not follow the same popularity distribution of the tweets that do not involve any causal language or argument in them. Um, in this figure, which is tweet count versus retweet count, we can see that on average, the number of, of basically the virality of the tweets having a causal argument are higher in both leave, Brexit leave and remain camp. The same results are like you know supporting uh, by the same results we, we got from Nord Stream 2, which supports the same finding, where the uh, messages including a causal argument are more effective and they achieve higher virality in Nord Stream 2 as well. The third hypothesis was presence of a threat to core societal and individual value of a target audience, where we detected this by um, you know, checking the presence of a negativity bias or a causal argument alongside with the core value of a target audience in a message. Example of a core value would be family, religion, nation, diversity, sustainability, and negative values would be wealth inequality and also, no, and also we divided the data into two groups, including threats to core values versus others. So, and the null hypothesis formulation, similar to the previous one, is popularity distribution of tweets with threats to core values are no greater than the popularity distribution of tweets with no threats to core values. So as we can see, based on the table, since p-values are less than the significance level, the null hypothesis is rejected for all three data sets. And we come to the conclusion that these two data, including threats and versus others, do not follow the same distribution. So we can see in these uh, figures, which is tweets versus retweet count, that on average, in both leave camp and remain camp, the messages including threats to core values are gaining higher attention from users and you know achieving higher virality. The Nord Stream 2 dataset also supports the same finding and shows that the ones having a threat to core values are more effective and achieve higher virality. You can find more details about like, you know, uh, finding, you know, data preparation and all the experiments, you know, in the paper. So let's see the joint effect. So far, we concluded that messages fitting any of these hypotheses will acquire more attention and engagement compared to others. Now we want to see the joint effect. 
since our data is a very like includes very zero includes a lot of zeros and it's zero inflated we use the zero inflated negative binomial regression model to assess the joint effects of these three hypotheses the regression dependent or target variable is the retweet count and the independent the predictor variables are h1 indicating a negativity bias in a tweet h2 indicating a causal argument in a tweet and h3 indicating a threat to core value in a tweet and finally follower counts which indicates the number of followers of a tweeter who is messaging Uh, this table shows that all predictors of the model are statistically significant and each variable has a positive interaction with the target variable. So which means that there would be a joint effect, including all these will also increase the virality. I would like to conclude my presentation and talk about our future work. So we concluded that presence of negativity bias, causal argument, and threats to core values will singularly or jointly increase messages virality. Also, from the Sankey diagram visualization of the network dynamics, we can see some opportunities, which are detecting divisive wedge issues alongside with their you know, content feature, content profiles. Also, we would like to see the unifying attractors alongside with their content profile. And the content profile can you know, refer to like, you know, some sort of language that the person used, the identities, or also like, you know, one of these uh, hypotheses that we either like, you know, talked about. So our future work is to develop content-based profiling techniques and algorithms for identifying wedges and attractors of enduring trends. Also, we would like to detect effective combinations of wedges that fragment certain type of target audience and also attractors that can unify them. Okay, thank you all for listening to me and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Excellent work. Uh, is there any questions from the audience? Okay, so I have two very quick questions. One is the leave and remain camps uh, in terms of population size. Uh, what were the values? So for the leave camp, we had uh, 1.5 million users. And for the remain camp, we had 1.3 million users. And that was like, yeah, overall makes 2.8 million users uh, of our data set. So, so uh, this brings my second question. So KS test is known to be very sensitive to computing distances, uh, especially when the population sizes are close. So sometimes people say, for example, if you do another test like Anderson Darling or something else, uh, you get a different value. You might not actually reject an all. I was just curious, have you looked at other tests and see if you get the same yes. results? Yeah, mm -hmm. we did that, you know, specifically with the Anderson, and we got the same results. I see. I see. We tested, yeah, a couple of them, make sure that you know our hypothesis are correct.